بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنما أموالكم وأولادكم فتنة والله عنده أجر عظيم بارك الله لنا ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعنا وإياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم إنه تعالى جواد كريم ملك برؤوف الرحيم One day Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was preaching in the Kaaba. Abu Jahl came and he was so disgusted and annoyed. He said, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you are the ugliest harsh might ever born. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi looked at him and said, you're right. Although you are the rudest person. And Abu Bakr stood up and spoke for the Prophet. He said, Ya Rasulullah, you're the most beautiful. You're like the sun, neither of the east nor of the west, that shines and brightens up everything. And the Prophet said, Abu Bakr, you're right as well. And people around him, asked, Ya Rasulullah, how can the two opposites be right? <laughs> One is saying the ugliest, the other is saying the most beautiful. Two opposites. How can the two opposites be right? He said, I am like a mirror that Allah has cleaned and made perfect. And everybody just sees himself in me. And you know, this is about perspective, how you see things around you, how you see the world around you. And Rumi goes on to tell, he goes on to say that if you were to look at the sun with a blue glass, what color will it be? And if you took a red glass and you looked at the sun, what color would it be? Red. And if you took and somebody says, no, the sun is blue. What would he say to him? And another one says, no, it's red. What would he say to him? He says, until you have the real glass, the transparent glass, the pure glass, you can't know the reality and the truth. And, you know, in fact, nowadays psychologists know this, that if they want to heal somebody psychologically, they say, you know, it's about their beliefs, their attitudes and their world view that determines <coughs> their sickness and their health. Whether they're going to get better or not is all dependent on their perspective and the way they view things, the way they look at things. You know, this is what Islam is about. This is what Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's teachings are all about. To show us and give us that clean glass through which we can see the reality. And that is why he used to pray, Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqa warzuqna ittiba'ahu wa arina al-batila batilan warzuqna ijtinaba. He used to pray, oh Allah, let me see the truth as it really is and then give me the ability to actually follow it. Let me see the battle, the falsehood, as falsehood is, so that I may avoid falsehood. You know, it's getting that perspective right. As you know, two weeks ago, there was a very big summit of the world's richest and the most powerful people at Davos. This has been going on for more than 50 years now. It was started by this great professor, the German professor, Klaus Schwab. And Klaus Schwab in his last address of, in his Davos conference where the richest, in, in other words, the powerful countries, the 20 powerful countries and their leaders come, and also richest people, and also people who are making differences to the world come. It's a very prestigious 
you couldn't get more worldly than that, okay? If you want to see the world, okay, it's more glittering than any of the Hollywood bunt, uh, uh, events or any others, okay? This is the real, okay? This is where the power lies. And he said something very interesting. I was reading his essay on it, and this is what he said. He said, young people are the most important shareholders let me just get my glasses out. Again, you need clear glasses and, you know, you need the right kind of way to look at things. Subhanallah. You know, and, and I hope this is what we need to be all thinking. You know, what are we using for our life? <laughs> you know, what perspectives we get? He says, young people are the most important stakeholders when talking about our global future. So he says, if you are talking about the future, we really have to talk about our young people. These are the people who have the most innovative ideas and energy to build a better society for tomorrow. In fact, he goes on to quote a figure that 50% of all people are actually under 30. Okay? And amongst the Muslims, it's actually slightly higher than that, particularly in the UK. So how could we ignore this? We should move away from a narrative. Now, this is the point. We should move away from a narrative of production and consumption to one of sharing and caring. Did you understand that? What, is, what have the economists of the past three centuries been preaching? You know, we want consumption, we want production. Production and consumption. Production and make more things, consume more. That's the only way any economy and any country's GDP is going to rise. Isn't that right? This has been the foundation, the golden rule of world's economy, consumption and production. But what is he saying now? No, we have to move away from this narrative. Are you listening to this? This is the world's greatest economist. You know, he's, he's regarded as one of the greatest economists of, all, of, of our time. Okay? He says we have to move to the narrative of Sharing and what is Wama Arsalna ka illa rahmatan lil alameen? Eh? What is Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim? It's all about sharing and caring, isn't it? What is the message of the Deen of Allah? Share and care for others. Okay? And he says, young people are the best place to this change for this change. Let's give them the opportunity. Now I selected this particular quote because I don't need proof that my deen is correct and right, okay? I don't need proofs for that. I'm, <laughs> I'm convinced. But the world out there isn't, okay? A lot of us, young people, are perhaps not convinced. And what is this man saying when he says we have to move away from the idea of just producing and consuming to one where we now live lives of sharing and caring? And of course, as you know, this is the very purpose of the deen of Islam, you know? The deen of Islam is founded on sharing and caring are actually two moral values. Okay? So he's actually saying, become moral. And the Prophet ﷺ said, My only reason is to make the character, the moral values, take them to the highest level and make sure that humanity lives by them. Then. Isn't that right? Well, I hope... You can see, I said to you, I I'm not doing this because I need endorsement from Professor Klaus Schwab, yeah, not for my deen, okay? But it just shows you the world out there is accepting these facts and realities which our deen stands for, which the Quran says. But the problem here is this. It's good for him to say this. But is he in the position to teach us how to do the sharing and caring? Hey? Is this multi-millionaire himself able to do that sharing and caring? Does he have a philosophy? Does he have a methodology of how to share and care? And there is where, you know, things stop. There isn't much he can offer. And this is where the deen comes in. And this is where the mission of the deen of Allah, Quran, and the sunnah begins. Seriously. This is where, and this is where we can help them. So I'm not, I don't know to criticize. We're not, we're not in the business of criticizing, okay? And, you know, I, I sent this out, uh, this thought of mine, 
about this. And somebody, you know, people are sometimes very quick to reply. So he replied to me this morning saying, you're always talking about swab, swab, Dr. Saab. What is this, eh? Isn't there anything else for us to do? And I hope you can see how misunderstanding we have. I'm not saying, I'm not an economist. I'm not a political leader. But I have something great to offer. The deen has great things to offer, okay? It's not offering you swab jay. Now when it says be caring and sharing, it's actually giving you a, a method. It's actually giving you a way of living, okay? So, you know, we just need to be open, you know? This is the problem with Muslims. Sadly, you know, we've lost our ability to think. We need to regain that once more, okay? We need, we need to again think, okay? We live in a world which is really lost and, 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 and uh, actually deceiving world. And the way we can tackle that is by having our own perspective, the way we look at it, the way Allah tells us to look at it, okay? And that, those glasses, you know, whether, you're gonna, whether you are going to use a blue glass or a red glass to look at the sun, okay? That is the choice, you know, our deen gives us. Look, we are giving you a choice how to look at the world. That's very powerful. That is empowering. Do you understand that? So this is the beauty of the deen of Allah. It actually empowers you. It gives you the ability to overcome things. So I, I, my, my, you know, so I took this as a wonderful opportunity. Well, if the world's greatest economist, the richest man is saying, now we should do more about sharing and caring. Well, let's give him some lessons. Let him teach. But you know, this cannot happen. You cannot start sharing. You cannot start being caring person. Communists tried very hard. They said, Stalin tried very hard. I'm going to make people share. Didn't he? What was the whole experiment of communism about? Killing those millions of people, sending others to Serbia into prisons and concentration camps. What was it all about? Making sure that the rich people share their wealth. Wasn't it? How miserably that ended, with millions of deaths, eh? But the revolution of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam isn't like the communist revolution. Neither is it like the socialist revolution of Europe either, okay? It is a pure revolution that is based on human goodness, okay? It comes from Allah. It stands by itself, okay? And so this is problem with the Muslims, you know, they want to see an ism. They want to see a particular ism, an ideology, but sorry, I don't have an ism, okay? Islam is not an ism. Islam is about giving you a view, okay, based on those solid facts of this wonderful book. And this is why it's really interesting, you know, if you read this, this is about correcting the perspective. Surah at taghabun verse 15 to 18, the last uh, f f five verses of it. In fact, the whole surah is at taghabun is about mutual deception. Mutual? It's interesting that idea. Mutually de de deceived. On the day of judgment, the believers will feel, oh, I was deceived. My goodness, why didn't I see how wonderful Akhirah is and worked harder for it? Eh? Why did I spend so much effort building my dunya? He will feel I was deceived. And the Kafir will feel, oh my goodness. I'm going to miss all these Jannat now. I'm going to go into Jahannam. I missed it all. He will feel deceived. So this attahabun, this deception, you know, which is so rampant in the world. You know, this surah is amazing. From the beginning to end, I, I really urge all of you, you know, just spend five minutes reading. And the way we presented it, mashallah, you know, in my, the headings, just makes it so easy to understand this mutual deception. And this, this guy, He's no exception. He's under that delusion and deception as well. He, who regards the power of the world, who regards the power in material things, okay? That it is through material things that I can do this. It is through building programs I can do this. Well, you might be able to do a few things, but really until you change people's attitude, until you change people's way of thinking, 
you have no way of succeeding, okay? And that is a fact. As I was saying to you, psychologists now, psychoanalysts, all of them accept this reality that it is your attitude, it is your belief system that determines how you look at things and whether you're going to be healthy or unhealthy. So coming back to, you know, this whole idea of sharing and caring, what do you need? How, do you, how can you move people from this love of the dunya, the pleasures of the, the whirling pleasures of the world, which are surrounding us, and we're immersed in those, okay? We are lost in them. We get deceived by them. We fall into this trap so badly, some of us. And it's like quicksand. Once you're in it, what happens? In a quicksand, you go deeper and deeper and deeper until you are completely sunk. You are buried under the weight of the sand, okay? That is what is happening. We're in that world, okay? How can you get out of that? You need shocks, very big electric shocks, perhaps not 240 volts, but, but perhaps thousands of volts. Or you need a, a big earthquake, not a seven uh, on Richter scale, but a massive earthquake that might judder us, shudder us, shake us, and bring us out of our daydreaming and our delusions. How can you do that? Well, that is what the Qur'an does. That is what Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi did. For example, he sees Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu an, this young, bright sahabi, a wonderful scholar, and he goes and he says, Abdullah, come here. And he puts his two hands on the shoulders of Abdullah ibn Umar, looks him in the eye and says, Ya Abdullah, كُنْ فِي الدُّنْيَا كَأَنَّكَ غَرِيبٌ أَوْ عَابِرُ سَبِيلٍ وَعُدَّ نَفْسَكَ فِي أَهْلِ الْقُبُورَ He says to him, Abdullah, live in the world like a foreigner, like a traveler, like someone, you know, who is in the grave and has no hopes of ever getting out. That is the kind of shock you need. That is the kind of, you know, electric shock that we need and an earthquake we need in our thought process to begin to see right, to begin to see and perceive the truth as it is. You know, if we don't get that, we won't. And here Rasulullah Sallallahu you know, one of, one of the beauties of the teachings of the Prophet is they're really maxims, they are proverbial, they are truths, okay? They're axioms, they are absolute truths. When he says, live in the world like a like a foreigner. After all, you know, this is the perspective he's giving now. What I'm saying to you, you cannot do what Professor Schwab is saying, that, you know, you need to have this sharing and caring attitude. You can't have that perspective until you adopt this other perspective of Rasulullah, which is, you know, you are a foreigner here. And what does a foreigner do in a foreign land? Well, the foreign land, he's always thinking about his home, first of all, eh? He's always thinking about his home, all right? He's in a far-flung place, in a distant, remote place, where he knows he's an alien, he's a stranger here, okay? He doesn't build his big palaces there, because he knows I'm only here temporarily. This is a transient place. I'm a, I'm a lodger here, okay? I'm not going to build a palace if I'm a lodger, if I'm renting, I'm not going to build that up. Isn't that true? So that's the perspective Rasulullah is giving us, you know, about dunya. And then he says, you know, like a traveler, traveler also knows that I'm just passing by, okay? And I'm not permanent here. And then he says, you know, qubur. Count yourself amongst the people of grave, okay? In other words, die before you, really die. In other words, give up the hopes of the dunya, the long hopes, the tule amal, those long hopes we have, you know, of building for our seventh generation, all right? We don't just build for ourselves, but we build for the seventh generation as well. This is correct your perspective. That is what is destroying the world today. That is what's responsible for those fires in Australia. That is what's responsible for all these big climate crises we are facing. Yes, that perspective that we can go on usurping Mother Earth, we can keep on you know, burning these fossil fuels without any consequences. No, the consequences are so dire and so big that actually they're existential. I don't, we, I don't know whether we would live after another hundred years. And this is why when he says, you know, the young people are important, 
that is right. You know, this is our future. But you know, the point I wanted to make out of this was, you know, we need to correct our perspective. And what the Quran tells us in Surah at taghabun is really very powerful. You know, you can read this last part where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Innama amwalukum wa awladukum fitna." Your children and your wealth is all a source of trial and tribulation. You know, that in itself, is, is, it doesn't say it is bad. Does it say it's bad? No, it says it's a test for you. What is it? A test. That's, I mean, that, the accuracy of it. I want you to understand the accuracy of what Allah is saying, okay? This isn't some emotional thing. This is a reality. This is a test for you. What should intelligent people do? They should pass that test, okay? Uh, how do you pass that test? By not getting immersed in it to such an extent that you lose the bigger perspective. You see, and this is the problem. Everybody, every country has what are known as national interests. Those national interests are very simply, how can we keep our GDP going up and up? How can we get our economic wheel spinning faster and faster? Anybody who tries to put, put a break on it is our enemy. That is it. That is the rule of the world. Allah is telling us to change that perspective. That should not be our interest. That should not be the only interest. There are bigger interests. And that is the perspective that's being given here. Innama amwalukum wa awladu. Allah then says, you know, wallahu, uh, wallahu indahu ajrun azim. Allah has the greatest reward for you. Subhanallah. You know, this isn't the, the, the reward and the success isn't this. There's something more than that. Be mindful of Allah as much as you can according to your capabilities. Listen, obey and spend in the path of Allah. Spend for the good of others. That is what I think you know, he's hinting to. Professor Shweb is saying, you know, share and care is that. Spend on others now, okay? But I hope, you know, without those preliminaries of taqwa, of being mindful of Allah, you can't achieve this either. And this is where, you know, I'm saying to you, the world might have very smart ways of doing things, okay? But the way of the Quran is even more smarter. It is the smartest way, to be honest. It is, in تُقْرِذُ اللَّهَ قَرْضًا حَسَنًا if you were to give Allah a loan, a good loan, what would happen? That is the one that will multiply. Okay? The worldly investment multiplies as well. Well, if you're very lucky, you could get about 6% nowadays. That, that's the best sort of investment you could get. What Allah says, we give you 700%. What is the comparison, eh? And then Allah says, Wallahu shakurun halim. Allah is the most appreciative the one who really values your deeds. And Alimul Ghaybi wa Shahada Al Aziz Al Hakim. You know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to correct our perspective. But brothers, this will not correct by itself. It requires hard work. And that hard work means going to the book of Allah, reading. So I hope inshallah you'll read Surah At Taghabun to overcome those wrong perspectives that we have and the correct perspective towards the world. Surah At-Taghabun, I hope you will all read. Wa akhir da'wana, and alhamdulillahi